Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included. My apologies for uploading infrequently this week, I just didn't have the time. I also celebrated my birthday, it just all kind of came together, but I'm gonna be able to make up for it during the next few days. What I would like to achieve in today's episode is liquid oxygen and potentially even hydrogen. The oxygen is going to be more important because we need that in order to continue our rocket program. The hydrogen would be the second step. Now our problem is we are going to need a aqua tuner made out of thermium. That is the next tier in materials that is going to withstand a lot more heat. One of my rockets is going to the satellite which is going to give us more isoresin and niobium. It's still gonna take a couple of cycles to return though. We actually only need 5 kilograms of niobium, considering we get about 20 kilograms per module, so 40 kilograms, that means we can craft quite a bit. It's not gonna be enough for the first aqua tuner though, so I'm really considering sending up another rocket with oxalite. Yeah, let's enable the building. I think we're going to be forced to do that. Also, keep on crafting some iron, please, and steel. In the meantime, we're gonna plan out the area. My intention is to not make this a rocket silo, so technically we can cancel this. This can just be normal bunker tiles. Or even better, on top of the liquid hydrogen and oxygen production, we are gonna have another space scanner that is gonna check for rockets to return. So at least we're not gonna lose our bunker doors anymore. Anyways, more to that later. Let's uh, first go ahead and set this up. I would like to get myself started with uh, two of these metal tiles. We're gonna make them out of steel and then I'm gonna need some power axis. So I'm probably gonna go with a heavy watt conductive joint plate. This is gonna have to withstand fairly high temperatures. I think I'm just gonna make it out of copper. My future aqua tuner is gonna go right here, though at the moment I don't have the materials, which also means uh, these pipes are in the way. Now, technically we have enough stuff in here. I have a little bit more steam in the left chamber, so I think what I'm gonna do is hook this up one more time in order to get a little bit more water in the joint. Oh no, I don't have enough obsidian material anymore. Oh, this is horrible. I'm using it everywhere. <laughs> Well, I guess since obsidian is kind of limited, I'm gonna exchange all my ladders here. There we go. Everything set up. Lots of dig and build commands. Should be good until our rocket returns. In the meantime, we keep an eye on this room. Uh, can find already. Wait, what did you do? Oh my gosh, now I have to keep an eye on you as well. I gave you these commands so I don't have to worry about you. Okay, I kind of regret it. At the moment, I truly have to babysit them. Everything seems to be under control now, so we can keep going with our build. So this is gonna be the height of my steam room together with my aqua tuners and they're gonna translate the heat into these diamond tiles. That also means we can do that and get rid of this part here. We don't need that anymore. I'm gonna make my steam rooms fairly small with a temp shift plate in the center, diamond. And then on the top I would like to have a slightly bigger room. So it's gonna look something like that. I know it's not quite even, but that is kind of intentional. I would like to place a transformer in this spot. The top room is gonna be square, four in height and four in width, though, hold on, that doesn't add up. Huh, of course, what was I thinking? I have to push it against this wall and then this we can use in order to transfer the power. That was my original plan. So this is gonna be the size of the room, divided in half, and we have two rooms, four by four. Those are gonna be our reservoirs for the oxygen and the hydrogen. And on the top, we're gonna have two more rooms with two reservoirs for each of the liquids. If you place a liquid reservoir on a mesh tile inside of a vacuum, it is not going to transfer any heat. So technically, we should be able to store liquid oxygen and hydrogen this way. However, for the other parts, we're gonna need a little bit of drywall. Obviously, we don't wanna lose all the steam that's inside of this room. And we also don't wanna lose our liquids, the precious liquids right there. On the inside, I'm actually also going to place a couple of diamond temp shift plates. I just want to make sure the temp shift plates don't touch any of the insulated tiles, otherwise we would have to make them like too thick. In order to pump in the oxygen and hydrogen, I'm gonna install a vent in each room. And eventually we also want to pump out the liquid, so we are gonna need two pumps like so. We're gonna build it symmetrical. My intention is to cycle both of the liquids at some point, so we're also going to install a liquid vent. I'm actually gonna do that at this point. The other slot I'm gonna reserve for a hydro sensor that we're gonna place right here in order to check the status of the liquid. So as soon as we reach the second tile with the liquid oxygen and hydrogen, we should be able to detect something with the sensor. 
If we detect, let's say, 500 kilogram of liquid with this sensor, we want to activate the pump. Not before that, we want a reasonable amount of liquid in the joint in order to be able to quickly even out the temperatures. This is the same method as with a liquid reservoir in our other contraption, but this time we're just using our own tank. Also, as soon as we have enough liquid in here, I don't want any new liquid to come in, or new oxygen in this case. So what we're gonna do is lead the automation wire below that, and we want to install a NOT gate. So the pump is gonna activate, however, the vent is gonna shut down. And of course, I wanna do the exact same thing on the other side. This should go here and right there. Then, as mentioned before, a couple of liquid reservoirs on the top, and this should be the end of it, technically. We're gonna install an insulation tile here, and then we can close off this room. The last thing we're going to need is a power, of course. Now, these rooms are gonna be fairly cold, so I think we can just go with lead. I'm gonna lead the power up here, just like that. Okay, so far so good. Rocket is almost returning. Let's maybe still do the piping. We're gonna need some insulated pipes. The first part we can do with igneous rock, but at some point for a couple of pipes we're gonna need the iso resin or insulation. Anyways, imagine this is gonna be the spot for our aqua tuner. We're gonna have our sensor right here, the temperature sensor. Of course, this is gonna be the super coolant loop. Actually, to maybe not confuse, I'm just gonna set up a dummy right here. So we're gonna swap this so the input is on the right side. Gonna set up a thermo sensor right here. And of course, complete with an automation wire right there. Now, this is gonna become fairly hot, so I cannot build this out of lead, I just realized. We're gonna make one out of copper and we're gonna do the automation wire with iron. The super coolant is gonna come from the top. If it is not cold enough, then it's gonna go through the aqua tuner, exiting on the other side going up. If it is already cool enough, however, it's gonna go up and then we wanna bridge over. Now let me think, we're gonna probably need one more slot, so I'm gonna go up two spots and then make the bridge. The reason I'm doing that is so we have the same amount of pipes for each route. We are then gonna continue upwards and even though we are already in the room, we wanna cool the liquid. At the bottom, we don't wanna use the radiant pipes. Otherwise, we're gonna run into huge troubles converting the liquid back and forth. What we wanna do is go up at this point and here we're gonna build the radiant pipes. We might even be tempted to only build the radiant pipes on the top. Let me do them out of... Oh, I don't have any more steel. Well, I'm still crafting it, so that's fine. But we might only want to cover these four spots here on the top. This should already be enough in order to, you know, do something with the temperature. I don't want to mess with the liquid that is already at the bottom. And if we send this through here for some reason in my testings, I was just having huge troubles getting that initial liquid going. This is basically already going to be our complete loop. So we can do the same exact thing on the other side. The aqua tuner would go right here with the input on this side. We have the coolant coming from the top, joining into the aqua tuner, coming out at the other side. Or alternatively, it doesn't go through the aqua tuner this way. We then want to come up here, up there, do the radiant pipes with steel. Come on. Right there and there, and the rest can be insulation again. Beautiful. Now, before I really build these aqua tuners, I want to cancel them again, because as mentioned before, we need them to be out of thermium, since it's going to be around 400 degrees. At least sometimes, I hope. Now, filling up the bottom two rooms with steam is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt, I have to admit. And the reason it's a pain in the butt is because we have too much heat going on here. It's gonna convert immediately to steam and therefore I cannot do that very easily. I'm gonna have to think about that one and it's gonna become even worse once my rocket returns. Hmm, maybe I have to do something before that. I mean, technically we could go ahead and just add a little bit of water like so. And we could get rid of these metal tasks. They are technically not necessary. I just wanted to store a little bit more heat. But we can use the window tasks here, no problem. So there would be another liquid vent right there. And obviously we have to clean that up with drywall. Yeah, that solution actually makes me happy. Now there's gonna be a secondary loop, obviously with the liquid oxygen this time. So we're gonna bring that up into our reservoir and into our second reservoir. And then we wanna bring it up even more. This time we're gonna use a liquid valve. And what this is gonna do is only allow a certain amount of liquid to pass through. So if we set this to, let's say five kilograms instead of 10 kilograms, then 
we are bound to gather some liquid in our reservoirs while still being able to cycle it easily. So we're simply going to continue downwards and right into our vent. I think our rocket just returned. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now this is going to become very hot. Hmm. Yeah, I think it doesn't matter. It's all cool. However, I would like to have this all taken away. This is just going to be in my way. Good, good, good. Okay, look at this. They actually don't manage to heat up all the way, which tells me that we are storing most of the heat. Now, it has been pointed out that we are still not storing the heat of the gases that are being produced, and that is correct, and something we have to address in the future. We're going to do the same liquid loop on the other side, however, I have to be a little more creative since you cannot rotate the liquid reservoirs. So this is gonna come up here like so, and this is gonna come up like so. Yeah, and I guess we're gonna have our valve right there. This actually makes me want to move the valve on the other side. So it's gonna be on the same spot here at the bottom. Let's uh, go ahead and deconstruct this. From the valve, it's gonna continue right into the vent, just like you would expect. There it is, liquid valve. Let's maybe start with uh, pumping through 5 kilograms and see how that works. So instead of 10,000 grams, we want to pump through 5,000. There's still the power problem to solve for our aqua tuners, and I think I'm just gonna go for the insulated heavy watt conductive wire. Even though some people are disappointed I'm using that, but I really find the mechanic that you have to use in order to prevent heat from seeping through with these joint plates just tedious and silly. So I got myself this mod and I highly recommend it to you as well. You know, actually thinking about it, we could just exchange this plate here. Yeah, this is actually a good idea. This needs to be obsidian anyways. Yeah, this needs to be obsidian and this would be the igneous rock. Alright, I am back. I decided to keep on playing a little bit because I had to send yet another rocket. So we are at the stage where the first rocket we sent already came back. I sent another one and we have our first thermium aqua tuner in the joint. And now I'm just waiting for 500 kilograms of thermium in order to complete the rest. We also have this power transformer in the joint and my intention is going to be to cool this down using some hydrogen. Now at the moment I already made the oxygen line. So what we are gonna need is just a tiny loop made out of insulated materials. It's gonna go like so, then it's gonna go up. Actually, let me go along this way and over again. Now, this pipe here and probably those two pipes are going to be radiant ones. And I got plenty of steel material once again, so we're gonna do it with that. Now, obviously, I totally forgot about that, so we have to deconstruct this one more time. I'm glad I thought of it before I actually got the machine started. Another thing we're gonna have to prepare is the super coolant. So let me just make a little puddle here. I think that's gonna be fine. Actually, let me build this somewhere else. Yeah, we're gonna have it like so with a bunch of drywall. And then we also want to be able to almost reach down. We're gonna have a liquid pump in there like so and then some insulated pipes leading over that are gonna allow us to fill up the initial loops so there's gonna be a bridge like so in order to fill up this loop and i think we can just let it fill up completely since we kind of calculated it yeah though it's still not the same amount of pipes because here we have one two three four spots until this one and here we only have uh, one two three so maybe just to be sure we should leave two pipes empty at all times so maybe to get things started, let's make sure these are never going to activate. If the temperature is, let's say, above the maximum, just like so. So these sensors shouldn't activate and therefore the aqua tuners are not gonna run. And that also means I can fill up the second loop with another temporary bridge. Good, then the only thing I'm gonna need is a bottle emptier in order to bring the super coolant down there. Also, I'm gonna need a little bit of power here, so all I'm gonna do is set up a hamster wheel. I mean, we're not gonna need that contraption for a long time. I have 500 kilograms of super coolant, so that's 50 pipes. Is that gonna be enough? Yeah, looking at that, I probably only need about 20 packets per loop. This is perfect. I already have enough super coolant. How about my rocket? Still taking a couple of cycles. By the way, as I was waiting, I already prepared the next area. These are gonna be my bedrooms. It's 21 in count. I also want 21 Atmo suit docks. And there's probably gonna be a bathroom and a mess hall involved in that build as well. 
I just did the easy part and I did it the same way as before, namely they all have to go down a certain path and they are gonna be forced to go through the nature reserve multiple times a day. We're gonna have to make an artificial nature reserve using pips, but more to that probably in the next episode. Meep is already going for it, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, just the deactivated. There goes nothing. Super coolant, priority 9. Let's see that happen. Oh yes. Oh, this is great. But I'm really scared, I don't want to lose anything. But technically we should now be ready to fill up the loop. Let's uh, enable the generator again. I decided to disable it using the power cables myself. That is a much more straightforward process for me. Uh, uh, there we go, it has started. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. Let's see, you go right there, filling up the first loop. Well, I, I guess filling up the second loop first. Uh, is this going in the right direction? Yes, indeed. Okay, and the aqua tuners should be disabled the entire time. Ah, okay, I see. This is actually brilliant. We are filling up the shorter path. So that means if we fill this up completely, no matter what happens, we should always have enough pipe slots. Ah, this is perfect. Okay, so now I can take apart this liquid bridge. By the way, there's never a liquid inside of the liquid bridges. It's always inside of the pipes. Okay, and now the super coolant is going back. That is, well, that is good. We can just leave it there. Cut that cable again. Yes, you can stop. And we're also gonna make sure the super coolant is going back again in here. Perfect, this was actually much easier than I anticipated filling this up. By the way, I also installed a signal switch here in order to be able to steer the gas vents myself. It might be that we don't want to disable the gas vents at the same time we disable the liquid pumps, especially when we're still in the initial phase. So I just added this switch so I don't have to get back in there again. But now we can close it off. Should be good. Okay, how are we gonna fill this up with hydrogen? I have a little bit of hydrogen storage here. By the way, I made this in a way so that whenever I have overflowing hydrogen, it's gonna go into these three tanks. The two first tanks you can ignore, but this last tank here has a gas vent. And I set the gas tank to open up the gas vent at a 100% threshold and then close it again at 95. So we're always keeping this gas reservoir 90% full at least. And all the excess gases that are otherwise clogging up my system are going to be expelled. However, right now I would just like to use this in order to fill up my hydrogen loop uh, with another gas bridge. Uh, just granite. Doesn't really matter. And thinking about it being a loop, we also need to define that. So at some point we are going to need a bridge. I'm gonna set that up here. Uh, this time though, it shouldn't be granite. Oh, that would have been a mistake. We want igneous rock. Well, it probably wouldn't have been that bad, but still. Oh, there we go. My rocket is returning. And check this out. The tiles barely heat up to 900 degrees and they go down immediately. This is crazy how much heat we can store in this. It's gonna take a really long time to get this to 400 degrees, but I'm hoping with the liquid oxygen system we can speed this up a bit. Also, all of this carbon dioxide has a certain temperature, so maybe we could use a mixture of temp shift plates and drywalls. And it looks as though we only really have to do this at the bottom here. Let me try that. We're gonna set up a couple of diamond temp shift plates like so. Maybe up to this point. Then we're gonna have some mafic drywall all the way around. And I guess we have to fill up the rest as well. Though I don't really want to waste my materials on this. I oh, know. And I of course have to take apart the entirety of the rocket again. Though this time it's not even that bad. Because we need to rebuild the rocket for the next mission anyways. The most important part is we are getting more materials, so we should be able to finish the system. Oh, before I forget, Toby, or whoever you are, Max actually, you're free to go and use the bathroom. All the materials have arrived, so let's get into Thermium a little bit more and we can do another 9 crafts. I'm only missing 500 kilograms. We're almost there, guys. Ah, uh, darn it. My bunker tiles got busted again. I just didn't see that. The bunker doors. Freaking, I have to change this now. So if we set up another satellite, just like this one here, on the top, we should be able to detect with a certain limitation when a rocket returns. Yeah, I'm gonna have to test it out. I'm not sure if that is gonna be enough scan quality. Now, another thing I wondered is, could I just exchange these bunker tiles here at the bottom with insulated tiles? Because I think I'm gonna have to do this at some point. I feel like these tiles are soaking up way too much heat. We could, for instance, build them out of mafic rock. What do you say about that? So 
Uh, we are gonna do that. Let's just do a little test with the mythic rock. See if that is gonna lead to better results. This is also giving me lots of steel back, so I think what I'm gonna do is set up a gantry for each module of the rocket. This is also gonna allow me to build everything that's on the inside I wasn't able to reach before. Yes, Hassan, you're my hero! Oh my gosh, oh, this took me so long. Finally, okay, we can now close this off. We can then close this off as well, and this should all be exchanged with insulated tiles. I just want to leave these two tiles as bunker tiles. They could also be metal tiles. Yeah, let's not... Hmm. I mean, it's not a waste of material. It's more a question of design. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with the metal tiles instead. We're going to choose some steel like so. Huh, we have a schnapps tile. 1111 cycles. Jeez. Yeah, we were definitely not in a hurry. <laughs> Beautiful. Last step is to drop in a little bit of liquid. And as I said, I'm gonna go with water in order to test it out. But we can leave open this gap in order to observe it if something goes wrong. Enable auto bottle. Let's freaking do this. Uh, hold on. I forgot about the hydrogen. Let's hook that up right there. Juicy, juicy. I already made sure that I can also input it back into my tanks once I have everything. I mean, it's just a really tiny loop that we have to fill up in this case. Okay, we dropped a full bottle in here. Let's wait and see if that is already enough. There we go. Hydrogen incoming. Loop is full. Let's get rid of the gas bridge. And we're gonna connect this up and cut this off again. Hey, voila. Hydrogen going back again. I'm glad filling up the loops went so smoothly this time. Good. I would say the last step is to actually get some oxygen in the joint. Um, yes, that's what I want. Plenty and plenty of oxygen. That is definitely the first step. Oh, uh, great. Okay, let's check it out. Oxygen properties. We want to get this to at least minus 183. But of course, we might want a safe margin. Let's just do 195. I think that's what I used in my testing. I'm gonna have to observe it for a little bit. But the idea is that once we have accumulated a little bit of liquid oxygen, we will be getting much more even temperatures in the sensor. And therefore, it's not gonna be quite as random. Now, this is gonna need power. I already prepared this. All I have to do is hook it up and... Oh, wait, what? Oh, no. Did I see something there? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, another thing I forgot is we are gonna need the water. Hmm. So we need to hook this up and I think we should be getting some water automatically, though... Ooh, no, actually not automatically. There we go. We're getting some polluted water. Great. That's already uh, 11 kilograms. I want to go up to around 60 kilograms. So in each of the tasks, we have 20 kilograms of steam. Oh no, I made another mistake. I now know why... <laughs> I'm so stupid. I know why I have that. This is a real bummer. Okay, so if I'm lucky, this is not going to convert into steam just yet. And I'm going to be able to enter or I just reload my save game. <laughs> What I wanted to do is have a conductive join plate like so. And we probably don't even need a bridge for the other wire. Okay, back to business then. We're gonna reconnect everything. We're gonna get the water in the joint. And we're also gonna get the oxygen right there. There we go. The water has been added. We're gonna do minus 195 just like before. Enabling the aqua tuner right away. By the way, this thermium material has an overheat temperature, uh, let me see, of over a thousand degrees now with the aqua tuners. That's great. A little bit of an overkill, I have to admit. You know, another thing I could have set up is a diamond temp shift plate right here and in the center. Let's check out the super coolant. We are coming in already at minus 64 degrees, so that went down quickly. Oh yes, this is great. And now we should also see this getting really cold very quickly. Oxygen already at minus 20 degrees. We have 130 degrees in the window top. And if we look at the steam, it's not much higher. So if the temperature disparity isn't high, I won't have to reload. And we can just screw this temp shift plate. Ah, of course. Because we added polluted water, we now have the dirt in the joint. Um, guys, you know what I do about that. Clear floor. That's what I'm using the debug mode for. But note to myself, if I don't want that, I need to insert clean water instead. Also, another thing I'm curious about is how much is this gonna cool down? Okay, that was around 8 degrees or so within the four pipes. Okay, we reached the critical temperature with the liquid. You can see the aqua tuner has turned off. Now we're just waiting for the oxygen to cool down enough. 
There we go, we have almost reached the target temperature and as I said, the initial process is gonna take a while, but then once the system is running, we should be able to convert the oxygen at a reasonable rate. Uh, okay, we had our first conversion, however, it turned into gases right away again because the bottom of the contraption is still not at the right temperature. Okay, unfortunately my idea here isn't working, the power transformer is now heating up. <laughs> I really wanted it to exchange the temperature with the ice, but there we go. Uh, let's do something else instead. We are gonna add, let's see, another vent. Yeah, and I guess we should have made use of our hydrogen we already had there. Oh, no, 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 please don't overheat. Come on, come on, hydrogen, where are you? Uh, <laughs> oh no, it's gonna be a close call. Please, oh no, it's gonna, no! Uh, please, cool down before you take down. Okay, I think it didn't take damage. <laughs> What an emotional roller coaster. Hooray! We have our first lasting liquid oxygen. Ah, uh, just look at this. Okay, now we're producing it constantly. That is good. And it's gonna become even quicker after this. I know the four pipes are not optimal in this case. We might want to build this a little bit bigger the next time we come up with a design like this so we can lead more radiant pipes through it. And look at that, we already raised the temperature of everything around 30 degrees, just using one aqua tuner. Let's now do the same thing with the hydrogen. What I want is the hydrogen to have priority upwards this time around. So we are gonna deconstruct this one and we're also gonna deconstruct this gas bridge. So now the hydrogen is primarily going upstairs, which is perfect. And instead of them actually going into these containers, I would like them to take a right turn. So cut this off. And we're just gonna follow my oxygen route. Gonna bring this up here and then over into our hydrogen tank. This also means we need more gantries in order to be able to build that. Important thing to note, freeze point of liquid oxygen is minus 218 degrees. And since we have set the sensor to minus 195, we should be good. We could even do minus 200. I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Then somebody is messing up again. Ah, oh, jeez. Ellie, what were you thinking? Unfortunately, I forgot to build the pipes when I still had access, so now I have to destroy a couple of things. Just as a new day dawns, also the hydrogen is now incoming, which is great. Let's actually check this out. We need to get this to minus 252. Let's do minus 255 and see what happens. Once we get the first liquid in the joint, we then need to analyze that. I forgot what the freezing point was, but the margin is way lower than the oxygen one. Okay, I think at this point we are good to wrap up the episode. I need to make sure that we get some new oxygen in the joint and then the next time we can actually start filling up one of the rockets, maybe even already with the hydrogen. Why the heck not? But yeah, with that out of the way, I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, have a great time and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next one. Bye bye.